Welcome back for part 5 of the 2008 Acura MDX cylinder head removal. Alright, so we've got the catalytic converter exposed now. And we need to get these four nuts off. There's one, two, three, and four. There are also some nuts below, so we'll take a look at those now. All right, so here are the three nuts underneath. One, two, and three. They go to the A pipe. I believe that section back there is called the J pipe. That goes to the rear cat. Now I've read that for the rear cat, it is best to leave the rear cat in place on the cylinder head and pull that out with the cylinder head. Then just disconnect the nuts underneath here. I am thinking about taking this whole thing out because I believe the oil pan is leaking. So I'm probably going to take the whole thing out, reseal the oil pan, and then put this all back in. Okay, so I'm going to spray some penetrating oil on the, the nuts here. I've got some PB Blaster. Uh, it works okay, I guess. Uh, penetrating oils like Croil or even Liquid Wrench I've seen also works pretty well. So if you check out the Project Farm video he did on penetrating oils, that was pretty informative. So if this does not work, I'll probably go to a torch with a little bit of beeswax, like I've done in other videos. I would definitely spray some sort of penetrating oil or use some sort of lubricant on these. I would not just go ahead and take them out dry like this. I've done that before and it has resulted in stripped nuts or broken uh, studs. So I would spray something on like this. Also, it's best to do this probably a day ahead of time, maybe do it overnight. Spray this on there and let it soak in. Get right in the threads here. Shake this up a little bit. Trying to get right under the head of the nut there. Probably a little bit too much, but that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to let that soak in for probably, I don't know, half hour. So as I've mentioned before, I live in the Pacific Northwest, and as you can see, there isn't a whole lot of rust there. So I'm thinking this will come off pretty easily. So if you have to go to heat where you live, just be very careful about how you use it because you are pretty close to the cylinder head and all these other assemblies here. All right, so I'm going to spray the nuts for the rear cat. Figured I'd do all this at one time. Okay, so we're going to get the nuts back here now. Okay, so as you saw, I did not spray the rear cat nuts, which are way up here. So I'm going to leave those alone for now. If I decide to take the cat off, then I'll spray them and try to get them out. All right, so I'm going to go around and just loosen everything first. I'm not taking anything off just yet. The reason I'm doing that is because I've done this before where I've taken nuts off up here, and that destabilizes the whole assembly, including the, uh, the A-pipe. And then I can't get the A-pipe nuts off because it's flexing too much. So I'm just going to loosen everything for now. So this is a 12 millimeter, surprisingly. I thought these were 14, but these are 12. And that's pretty easy. There's one. That's loose. And this one down here. This is not a deep socket, by the way. Oh, there we go. That's loose. Surprisingly very easy. All right, so we're going to get these lower nuts now. We've got 14s here. There we 
we go. That's loose. Let's do this one. Okay, so I've got an extension here. Make sure I get this straight on there. Perfect fit. And that is loose. So we've got these three loose and we've got the three above loose. All right, so I'm gonna go for these lower nuts on the rear cat. That's loose. There we go. There we go. All right, so this is where the real fun began. All the exhaust nuts were loose except for the three rear nuts. I started removing one of the nuts with a deep 14 millimeter socket, which I later realized was a mistake. I should have used a shallow socket to ensure that it had good leverage and stability. The bolt's head stripped slightly. Wow. Okay, let's give this a shot again. One last shot here. Ah, shoot. After spraying down the area with Simple Green HD and wiping it clean with paper towels, I tried a torch and beeswax, which did not work very well. Yeah, I can't get a good grip on this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna stop there. To get a quick win, I moved on to the nut on the passenger side. Having learned my lesson from my experience with the nut on the driver's side, I immediately hit it with the torch and beeswax. Then I use a standard 14 millimeter socket on a breaker bar and my foot to break it free. Wow, okay man. All right, so we'll cut to the chase on the driver's side nut. I applied heat for a longer length of time, then tapped on an Irwin bolt out with a sledgehammer and broke the nut free with a breaker bar using my foot. Okay, it's turning now, finally. Okay, wow. That thing fought really hard. The remaining top nut gave me all sorts of fits. Okay. Boy, that's not moving either. I figured I could use some heat and my impact to break it free, but the stiffener that spans from the driver's side to the passenger side needed to come off to provide clearance for the impact wrench. Well, one of the four stiffener bolts also decided to be stubborn, and I stripped his head when I attempted to remove it with a 14 millimeter socket. I minimally use heat on the stiffener bolt since it's right below a bushing. A bolt out after applying PB blaster then beeswax after cleaning up the PB blaster didn't work. So I drilled a hole in the head for a spiral extractor which had to be done with a cobalt bit because the stiffener bolts are high tensile strength. Great. By the way, these DeWalt bits and a little oil worked excellently. One of the jaws on my small tap broke and I couldn't get the bolt to break free with a large adjustable wrench. I took a break from the fastener debacle and visited the salvage yard to scavenge for a few items. I found a tail light for the driver's side that had a little paint transfer on it, some sill plates, two of which had plastic still on them, and a rear cargo mat. 
A couple days later, with my mind a little clearer, I went back to work on the fastener removal. What finally worked to remove the stiffener bolt was recreating some semblance of the hex-shaped head. I used a 9904 bit on a Dremel, then removed the bolt with the bolt out. Alright, so I took the stiffener out that was over here, and now we're going to work on that nut up there. Again, the stiffener is not necessary to take it out of here. I've got a lot of leaks under here, so I'm doing a lot of cleanup and a lot of other things while I'm in here. So that's why I took it out. But you don't have to do that in order to uh, get to where we want to go, which is basically getting the cylinder heads off. So I have this wobble socket that I'm going to use. All right, so you're catching the tail end of this, but I heated it for about probably about 25, 30 seconds. And now I'm going to get this off. That took several applications of the heat and it finally came off. Um, yeah, there we go. All right, so I'm going to take off the front cat and I'm going to get these nuts out first and then I'll get the nuts out above and pull it out. All right, so let's get these nuts out up top. So these are 12 millimeters. Just lift it up this way. There we go. Carefully pass the condenser and out. All right, so I am under the car. I'm going to get these rear cat nuts off. All right, so the last thing holding this A pipe in is the hanger right there. So I'm going to put a little bit of silicone paste on that so I can slide this rubber part off there. Okay, that should be good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the A pipe off now. So first I'm going to get, get it off this hanger. Try to hold this up with one hand while I do it. Do that. Okay. Now this is going to flex, so I don't want to be holding it too too much in this area where my left hand is. Now that I almost have this off, try to wheel my way in here. Hold it up by this part of the pipe. Okay. So what I'm doing now is trying to get it off the studs for the rear cat. I'm just slowly shaking it off. There we go. I'm going to slide it down and out. All right, so there is the rear cat. Now I can remove the rear cat by itself or I can remove it with the cylinder head. In order to get it out by itself, there are quite a few things in the way, though, as you can see right there. That is the intermediate shaft, drive shafts over there. So that means we'd have to take apart some of the suspension to get the drive shaft out of the intermediate shaft, remove the intermediate shaft, and we'd also have to drain the transmission. All right, so I'm going to take this bracket off right here. Now, this one, this bolt here should come out pretty easily. That one I'm not so sure about. So you may want to put some penetrating oil on that from the back side because it goes it goes through the hole there so you can't actually access it from the back side all right so i was going to use penetrating oil or heat but i think i can get this out with this longer handle ratchet here yeah there we go cool Okay, so I'm in the process of loosening this bracket bolt right up here. 
That's so I can get the harness, give a little, have a little more accessibility to the harness so I can take it off that bracket. And it is loose now. I already loosened it. I'm just showing you where it is more than anything. Okay. Look at this out. There's that bracket I was after. So as I was fishing around trying to get this bracket loose up here, this fell out. So that's the cap nut we were looking for for one of the uh, ignition coils. So I lost this, I want to say about four weeks ago. There it is. Okay, so I was going to attempt to take the wire harness off the bracket, but one clip is here and the other one's way up there somewhere. So instead, I took the breather hose for the differential off this bracket. I'm just going to take the bracket out with the cat. All right, so I'm going to take this bracket off the front of the cylinder head. It is right down there. That's a 14 millimeter. Now there is a clip right there for this wire harness. I think that can stay with the bracket. Okay, there's that bracket. I'm going to put this bolt back in so I don't lose it. All right, so I think I'm going to work on getting the cylinder head covers off next because I need to get to the fuel rails and the bolts are right underneath here. So, to do that, I'm going to take this off, this whole wire harness assembly here. Let's see if it's going to lift off. I think it will. Yep, there we go. All right, so I'm going to take off a bunch of 10 millimeters now. So we've got one, two, three. Uh, looks like four and five, I believe. I think that's it. I also need to take the dipstick out and pull that out of here. Gonna get these all loose first. Oh, those are really tight. They're not supposed to be that tight. And then this one. There's one. There we go. That's a long one right there. That's a fairly long one also. So it looks like this one right here, that was right here in the center, that's a shorter one. The rest are fairly long. All right, so I tried to pry this cover off. It is stuck on here. So what I think I'm gonna do is kind of take a, a step back here. I don't wanna to get too aggressive with this and damage the cylinder head. So I'm gonna use a flexible putty knife and try to get in here and loosen up some of this gasket material. Just kind of create a little bit of a gap here, hopefully. Okay, so I got the small pry bar. Just gently kind of work it underneath there. You can see that gap formed. I'm just going to twist it just a little bit here. There we go. And come down here. Hopefully, that'll open up for us too. It's coming off now. Oh, there it goes. Wow. Ooh. That's pretty uh, dark.
That's the underside of the valve cover. You can see that there, it's pretty dark. So I'm gonna work on the rear valve cover now. I'm gonna take this hose off right here. That way. Okay, there it goes. There we go. Jeez. Okay, so I'm gonna get the wire harness in the back off. Looks like there is one bolt here, and the second one is right there. So those are 10 millimeters. That's the first one. And the second one. Something else is hooked on. I'll take this hose out of here. All right, so this wire harness, there, it's on this bracket right here, which we're gonna get off in a bit here. The clip is one of those ones where you push the tab that way and then lift it out, lift it off the bracket. So I'm gonna see if I can get that off. I wanna try to get this a little bit higher than what it is right now. Try it with something like this. off now. Uh, supposedly in the service manual it mentions to take this bolt out, this ground wire bolt. Okay, and I'm going to put the bolt back in the hole. Okay. And this one here is right below the water hose. Beautiful. Swivel adapter for this one with the 10 millimeter socket. Okay, this one's out. That's a tough one. That's that one. Okay, so we're gonna have to give this one the same treatment as the front. Feels like it's welded on almost. All right, so the pry bar is not working out too well on this one. I'm going to try a screwdriver very carefully. Just want to get it to separate at least. There we go. Okay. There we go. So the back cylinder head looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the fuel rail off next. So there is a nut right here. You need to get that off, that's a 12 millimeter. All right, so there are four bolts, two on this side, two on that side. We need to remove, those are eight millimeters. There's that one. All right, so we're gonna get the two out in the rear. Those are much easier to spot because you can see the brackets right here. There's one right there and one here. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm gonna unclip this wire harness here. There's one. There's the second one. So now this can lay to the side. There's that one. And this one. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna lift the fuel rail out of here. So it takes a little bit of work to get the injectors out of this base here. So I'm just rocking it back and forth. There we go, there's one. I do have a paper towel close by just in case. Get the second one out, that's out there. There we go, there's a third one. That one took a lot of effort. I'll just slide this off that way and then just pull this out. 